Hey Hodies, welcome to my channel. My name is Hodemess Tom and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are going to be talking about my budget and how it went in September. If you are new to my channel, my channel is mostly about loving my makeup collection as it currently is, finding new ways to feel differently about the items of my makeup collection, and just loving it in general. But every now and then I want to partake in a new item and I try to do that as judiciously as possible. I'm trying not I'm not trying to buy every new makeup release, which is why I'm doing a makeup budget. If you want to know the rules to my budget, I will link my playlist of this year's budget in the cards for you and down below if you want to know all of the rules because I'm not going to go through them every time I do one of these videos because the rules have been like stated, they're known, that's how I'm navigating through this beauty budget. I also once did a six month no buy so I know how hard it is to resist the temptation of every new release. I've been there this is me rehabilitating myself to come back into the consumeristic side of the beauty industry, but in a more responsible way. That kind of content sounds good to you. I would love to have you subscribe. If you would please like this video, it really helps me in the YouTube algorithm. And I am also on patreon.com if you'd like to support me there, but no pressure to do so. This month was weird. You might've been like, Tom sure bought a lot of stuff. And if I recall Tom's budget, like perhaps could not allow for that many things. And you, you'd be correct, but we had a twist. There's a plot twist this month that is well within my rules. So we'll get into it. But I started this month with $120.36 and I bought one, two, Two, three, four, five. I bought six items. Spoiler alert, I did go over budget, but probably not in the way that you thought that I did. Let me go through the items as I purchased them and how they categorized into my budget. But also part of this video, I'm going to talk about some things that I really haven't touched down on and like giving you opinions on yet. There are some things in my makeup collection and there's also something that I don't count towards my budget that I did purchase because I don't per I don't consider tools to be part of my budget and I do that because I, I'm not always interested in buying makeup tools. I'm fairly happy with my brush collection as it is and kind of any other tool that I can think of off the top of my head. It's not something that I'm always like running out to buy. But let's go down the list. Let's see what's sticking around in my collection and let's see if anything is going to depart. Starting with <laughs> the Gucci blush in rosy beige. If you saw a video, because I kind of snuck a rev this review into like a let's play with makeup, but I was just like, it's in here if you want to know my thoughts on it. I and maybe one of the few people who was really disappointed in this blush. I think a big part of that is that I thought the shade was gonna be one thing and it turned out to not be the shade that I wanted it to be and therefore I didn't like it. So I already had that going against it. But beyond that, I did not find the formula to be like worth $50 at all. Like I just didn't find it. Also this, I have this as $51. So and that must be with tax and perhaps it came out to an even 51. I believe they retail for 49, so that's with tax. I will tell you this though, I bought this through Gucci's website and it came in like a beautiful package, as I would expect. So there was like a lot of experience that I didn't include in my initial review. So that's certainly something. This came in like a, a burlap sleeve, like the box with this in it came in a burlap sleeve. And then the, I also got like a wine bag, but that might have more to do with what Gucci's doing on the runway right now. I don't know if it would have to do exclusively with Gucci Beauty. This is a, a nice blush. It blurs, but when I am paying the amount of money that I paid for this, my expectations go a lot higher for the formula. Again, a lot of my peers and a lot of the people that watch my YouTube channel have really, really enjoyed this and have gotten on with this. So I'm I'm certainly in the minority here and it's not even so much that I hate this. It's just wasn't what I wanted it to be color wise. And it was like fine for a blush. That packaging is something that's very nice, but I actually don't think I'll use this color. And I think that's happening for a number of reasons because I think it's an okay color, but it's not the color I wanted it to be. And so I kind of resent this piece of makeup. And so I think that every time I will look at it in my drawer, I will go, ugh. I do actually really wish that I, not that I had bought two, but I'm wondering if I like, if I bought a different color that I had less expectations of, that I think I might like this better. But this is what happened. This is my truth. I'm going to pass this on to someone. It just didn't work out for me. I'm happy to have tried it. I also actually am quite fucked off by them putting this little dot in the back as if this is a refillable thing, but it, the pan is glued in. So don't, don't do that. If there's like an intention of potentially doing refills, then you can change the packaging. I just can't imagine maybe this is actually, I don't know. It can't be. It's Gucci. Like I, this doesn't feel like stock packaging that they bought 
but maybe the bottom part of the component is, and maybe the top part is the part that they like made unique to the brand. I don't know. There's something weird about that. And I just, I'm like, that doesn't really, it doesn't sit well with me for whatever reason. I know that's like a really, really interestingly stupid picky thing to think of whenever I'm like thinking about how this product makes me feel. But that's just the way it makes me feel. The next thing I bought was the Auric Glow Lust. I paid $40.93. This was on sale when I bought it. It was a Labor Day deal or some kind of deal. There was a sale. It was during Labor Day weekend. I don't know if it was because of Labor Day. It might have been, the code might have been labor. I actually really don't know. I can't recall. I will be doing like a dedicated video to this. I think it has been very clear <laughs> that this is a product that I have been incredibly impressed with. I have found incredibly versatile and I am not mad that I have this at all. In fact, I'm kind of mad that no one said directly to me, it said, you should try the Auric Glow Lust. Now, I realize that in the past, I may have said some things about products like this, not about specifically this product from Auric, but like the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, the Lisa Eldridge Glowy thing, the Elf thing. Well, the Elf thing was, people wanted me to try it, to review it, but I had nothing to compare it to. And I think, the most valuable part about going into that e.l.f. product would have been me having tried something like this and like knowing what I might want to do with it. So I'm going to leave like all of my really more detailed thoughts in the, the dedicated video to this, even though I know it's an old product. I think it deserves its own video. And you might disagree with me, but well, it's not going to be a dedicated video. I'm also going to review the Smoke Reflect in Ego, which I also have. I have had so much fun exploring this product and I am having, I am enjoying holding it right now. I feel like, like I don't need another highlighter, like ever. Like I think this is where the, the train stops here. I'm not wearing it today. I cannot just keep using this when I have other beautiful things in my collection that I know I like. There's actually a dent in this. Like I can see that the product has gone down. So I am using it quite a lot. They really do boast about like how much product you get in this. And I was like, I don't know. I might be one of the people who like buys it once every six months. No regrets. The next thing I bought was from Black Moons Cosmetics. I bought, what do they call these? The Sinister Satin lipstick in the shade Omen, which is a black lipstick. I really like this. And I think for an indie brand, they have actually done a really good job with packaging. It's not like weighted, but it's actually just very appealing to look at. It is a different looking component. It doesn't look like other lipsticks I have, which makes it really unique. I think maybe if I had more of these, if I had more shades of this, I might dislike this because it's kind of hard to tell what the shade might be on the inside. But because this is the only black lipstick I own, I know what I'm getting into whenever I pull this out. I know I'm getting a black lipstick. So that's like a pro for it now, but I can't speak to having multiple of this. I don't know how easy it would be. Like, I don't know if the sticker might be a different color if you buy a different shade of lipstick. This is a beautiful lipstick. It is like one swipe pigment. It is super comfortable on the lips. It does retain the satin finish as its namesake. It is a satin finish formula. And as we head into spooky season, I'm really excited to have it. As you also know, I've been like kind of wearing it in a lot of videos. Like I've been enjoying having a black lipstick in my collection again. I love black lipstick. I hadn't had one in a while, but it was time for a new one. And I also bought this on sale. It was $17.27. I think the discount was 20% whenever I bought this. So I think these are normally like 18 and I, you know, with the discount, but then add tax onto it at 17.27. Really like this, happy to have it. Really excited to have a black lipstick in my collection. And this formula is delightful. I know they have other shades. The only thing that I, they, the other thing that I have my eye on from Black Moons was a limited edition shade and it was like a mustard yellow. It was in the liquid lip, which I'm like obsessed about. I have it, I, it, I don't know if it will ever come back, but it's still on their website. It said limited edition, but it's like notify me went back in stock. And I, so I, I put my email on there. That actually would have used up most of my budget. However, I received a Visa gift card from, if you guys don't know, whenever I make affiliate links, there's a couple of websites that I use. So if you are a fellow creator and you don't have like an, a direct affiliate link or code with a company, there are a couple ways to do this. And so I'm just like sharing, sharing this with anyone who might need this might be interested in this. There's a website, Magic Links. And as long as that company works with Magic Links, you can make an affiliate link. The percentage you would get from that would vary 
depending on the brand. Magic Links, you can do like Sephora, Ulta, Nordstrom, a lot of the big name brands and then some of the smaller brands too. There's also Shop My Shelf. I think it is a much easier website to use, but oftentimes the percentages are lower. But whenever I do an Instagram post, I prefer to do that because it'll all be there. Those are the two websites that I use. But there's another website that I was perusing someone's description box and I noticed that their link was different than any of the ones that I had seen before. Shop LTK. And just so you're aware, you do need to get approved for these and I'm not really sure what the minimum is. Magic Links, whenever I had 300 subscribers, I was able to use Magic Links. So I don't think it's like an incredibly high threshold. Um, I know that's not what this video is about, but there's some either like insider baseball information for you if you're like not interested in becoming a creator or like if you are a creator and you didn't know about these resources, I'm just throwing them out there. Anyway, Shop LTK, they make you do your post through the app and all your linking through an app for your looks. And I hate it, but they sent me an email and they were like, if you do three posts this week, we'll send you a hundred dollar gift card. And I was like, well, I might as well try. I wasn't actually expecting them to send me a gift card, but they did. I use that to buy some makeup that I was interested in. So let's talk about that. I bought the Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks in the shade Mimi and it was $51.36. Just so you know, if you were looking for this shade, it is only available exclusively through the Westman Atelier website. And it looks like this. So <laughs> the real reason that this came into my life, and I've talked about this in another video, but you just found me through this video. I really have wanted this shade for some time, but then Gucci launched these. I thought perhaps they might be the shade that I'm looking for. So after this was a bust, I got the gift card. I've been holding out on buying this because it's expensive and I had to buy it through the Westman Atelier website. So there was also like no, you know, I wasn't gonna get Sephora points for it or anything like that. I don't know, like that's like, you know, I slightly care about that, but like not really, but like, you know, sometimes you still wanna order from a brand's website. There's like a convenience to shopping through Sephora or Ulta and you know that you're gonna get it in a certain amount of time, etc. I did it another video where I talked about Mimi versus Rosie Beige from Gucci. They're very different shades. This one is like a lot warmer. I actually have never felt this way about a blush. This is not my first Baby Cheeks formula blush. I also have the shade Poppy, which is a bright pink fuchsia. And it's not like obviously an everyday shade. I have never actually had a blush where I thought I could wear that every day with every look and be completely satisfied. Don't need another blush ever in my life kind of feeling, but Mimi is that for me. The soft warmth doesn't turn orange on my skin at least. I, I could fear that people who have the tendency to put products on their face and it like immediately turns like a, a warmer, orangier color. I feel that could happen with this, but I'm not, a, I'm, I don't fear an orange blush. So that's also part of it. But whenever you buff this out, it just looks on me like a actual very natural flush, which if you've ever watched any other person who talks about beauty, that's like the ideal thing is like everyone's looking for the thing that like, when I get a little bit flushed, what is the color that I turn? And it happens to be <laughs> something close to this. And so it evokes that fleshy, a little bit of blushy, maybe a little bit of sun, not really sure. It is just like the perfect shade for me. The thing is I've been on the hunt for like, well me and my friend Brittany <laughs> have been on the hunt for like this dead gray pink shade of blush that is like light and also gray, but leans right down the middle of the gray and pink. And I know that your skin is gonna like change it and you know, whatever other products you're gonna use. We'll change the undertones of things. Like I understand that's the thing that's gonna happen. And we actually both kind of have fallen down the same rabbit hole. We both bought Rosie Beige. I bought Mimi because she lives in Canada and buying through West Michelin's website to ship to Canada. And kind of what I know about shipping to Canada en general is like really annoying to do. Duties, things like that. Like I know that's really annoying. I took one for the team, bought this. I at least had Rosie Beige to compare it to. And this one works out way better for me and I'm keeping it and I'm like obsessed with it. And it is a challenge for me when I am doing my makeup, which I mostly do my makeup on camera or when I'm going to hang out with friends. And actually I am off my nine to five this week and I've done makeup every day this weekend. And I'm excited to do my makeup for the rest of the week, even if I'm not doing it on camera. Figure I can like test some things and do some demos. Not that I have like actually new stuff to test. While I liked Poppy, Pop, am I calling it Poppy? If I've been calling it Poppy, it's Pop It. Pop It is the pink. If I said Poppy before, it's called Pop It. Why did I mess that up? Anyway, I really like that formula, but I just don't find myself using that blush so much because I notoriously don't do the most pink looks. And it is a hot pink. 
and I don't know what inspired me to buy it, but I do keep it around because every time I use it, I have a good time. And almost every time I do a pink look, it's an excuse to wear Mimi. I don't know if you knew that. Like when I do a hot pink look, I'm like, it's so I can use Mimi, kind of exclusively. It's not Mimi, it's Pop It. All right, the next thing is a, it's a real crapshoot. I don't think I, have I talked about it here yet? I know my patrons know about this because I used it on a patron video. I bought the Dior Quint in the colorway New Look, which is this cool toned situation. Here's the deal. <laughs> I started watching Amanda Z. A lot of YouTubers that I watch, watch Amanda Z and reference her videos quite often. I went to her channel and she, was recommending things for some kind of sale or like whatever. And maybe I was watching a Sephora sale video because I don't know. I find that's a good way to get to know how a person feels about makeup and how they navigate through the makeup space. I very rarely will click on a video, a see a creator's eye look and go, I need whatever's on your eyes. Because I have a pretty extensive makeup collection and I know that. And I scrolled down because she had like this beautiful, wet looking, beautiful, gorgeous, stunning eye look. Cool tone eye look, and I've been like so into cool tones right now. You can, can tell by the way my face is right now, but I did a, I'm recording a single spotlight for Instagram and YouTube shorts and all of that. So I was focusing around the shade on my lid, which is the shade Foiling from Cleona Cosmetics. So you don't have to go down to the description box, but if you're ever curious about what's on my face in a video, I do put that information all in my description box if you're ever curious. I haven't been playing with this that much. I have been really focusing on like the single spotlights and I've been really loving the stuff that I put in my fall fantasy drawer. So I've been pulling that out quite a bit. And not that I'm not interested in testing this, but whenever I used it the first time I used it, I was like, I did not get the same beautiful look that Amanda did. And I have since watched Amanda do some application videos, not with this product, but just like other products. And she has a much softer hand than me. So I think I need to like uh, take a different approach to this. And I know that I just shit all over Dior's name in a video not that long ago. <laughs> I'm actually impressed with the quality of these. They are much more pigmented than any other luxury brand eyeshadow that I've used. You can get it to look like this color in the pan. It doesn't just become like a wash of a cool toned brown. You can build it up to that. They're all very pigmented, except for this one, which is must be the topper wet look shade that Amanda had on her lids in that video. I have actually paired this with one of the Rowan shades in a video, but I like did it the other day because I, I'm still working on the Rowan video. I wanted to see how the Rowan's would, Rowan shadows would layer on top of powder and I used this shadow. So like, yeah, I have, I find them easy to blend, but I also am well aware that many of you aren't into like the boring color stories, which is like something that I'm like kind of finding my way into right now. So I don't think that any of you need to run out and buy this. Like I don't think this is anything kind of revolutionary, but it inspired me with the color story for the time being. The packaging also wasn't like great. I mean, I think you guys can tell, but like it's, it's, it's given chintzy for something that cost $66.96. <laughs> I also one employee of the month, so I had a $25 gift card to Sephora too, which also calculates into the total here. Still need to spend some more time with it. Finally, whew, okay, we've done a lot of shopping this month. There was a point where I was like, I'm, I have overwhelmed myself with the stuff that I have brought into my makeup collection this month. I am one of the annoying people who does rotate out my mascaras once every three months. I did notice that the mascara that I am rotating out, which is the Isamea one, the Rubber Lash from Isamea, does have a six month shelf life. It does say that on the packaging. And perhaps if I like paid attention to that, I would have just wrote out the six months, but then I don't know. And I'm not judging anyone who rides that longer. Listen, we all have our own journey and how much we, I'm not gonna say believe shelf life, but we all definitely have makeup that is expired that we are using. Creams, powders, otherwise, it's kind of a, Use at your own risk. Makeup at the rate that many of us, I'm not saying all of us, but many of us buy, it's hard to get through in the time frames that they suggest you get through them. I was like, you know what? I really miss my YSL lash clash. I take a trip down to Sephora. March my cute little butt down to Sephora so I can get my divine little hands on a, another YSL lash clash. If you are new here, to buy something that I have purchased previously, meaning like if I'm renewing my mascara or if I run out of an eyeliner and I'm like, I would like to buy that same eyeliner instead of exploring a new eyeliner, 
it doesn't count against my budget because I'm kind of using that my budget to explore new things. I don't consider like a repurchase to be something that it was like a desire, right? So like, I don't find that buying a mascara that I know that I like to be a risk or anything that I should count against my budget. You might view it differently with your budget, but that's how I've been working my rules. My divine little hands get to the YSL. And I'm like, oh no, there's no lash clash. There's also two places for the lash clash. I look at that place, it's not there. I look down at the bottom, it is not there. This is the Sephora I used to work at. I go over to my girl, my girl who I wasn't expecting to see, my girl Nakisha, and I said, hi. <laughs> Hi, it's been two years. Well, yeah, we were obviously, this is obviously not exactly how this went, but I like, <laughs> this is my story. Okay, I'm going to tell it the way I want to tell it. <laughs> I walked her and I was like, okay, listen, my favorite mascara is out of stock. Can you check the drawer? I don't check the drawers, even though I used to work there. I, the way that people brazenly, it's like, it's just out of some of Because, you know, it only looks suspicious. Even though I know, you know, we both know that you're probably not digging in the drawer to steal something. You're just looking to see if we have something in stock. She checks the drawers. There's nothing in the drawers. And I was like, isn't there something that you might recommend? And I actually wasn't thinking. I had been wanting to try the Lancome mascara that has the serum in it that Michelle Wong has been going off about. And I want to try it. I actually don't know how much it costs. That would have deterred me. Because it has a lash glowing serum in it. Lash growing serum in it. My field of vision right now is the glowy makeup serum from Laneige. So I think I was like, that's what I was trying to say. She says to me, was it something from Too Faced? I was like, ooh, I would not like to try a Too Faced mascara. The damn girl mascara, I actually didn't get, I didn't hate, but I wasn't looking to buy the damn girl mascara. And then she says to me, I've been wearing this. This is the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara. I have it on my eyes. I'm gonna zoom you in. We're gonna get close. This is what it looks like. This is one coat. And I am new to the tubing mascara game. I don't know a lot about it. If you ask me how it compares to other tubing mascaras, I think the only one I've ever used was, and I heard this, I heard this. I don't know it's to be true, but I've heard that the, the mascara that Glossier makes is a tubing mascara. But I don't know, I don't remember what it's called, but I've used that, but I didn't know that it was a tubing mascara. I don't recall knowing that it was a tubing mascara, if it isn't, is a tubing mascara. So I might just be lying to you and I will put up facts if I can find any. <laughs> After some research, it, it, Glossier calls it a, a film forming mascara, but I was reading some other beauty blogs who just are referring to it as a tubing mascara. <laughs> Someone said the Glossier Lash Slick isn't a tubing mascara in the way that the Wowder isn't a powder. Do with that what you will. We're early days. We're early days in it but we are getting along quite well. There are benefits to tubing mascaras. They they create a tube around your lash. They stay, they're supposed to stay, they're supposed to stay all day, but be really easy to take off by just like some gentle pulling. I don't wanna say pulling on your eyelashes. I don't mean that. But just like, you know, just like some gentle removal. And I have found all of the things to be true. Lasts all day. Looks good at the end of the day. And I'm not one to, to be out here praising tart. I'm not one out here to be trying tart willy-nilly, but Nakisha's lashes looked great. It was what she was wearing the day that I was in the Sephora. And I was like, I guess I'll try it. And I, so again, not a tubing mascara connoisseur, but I have heard that one of the downfalls is that tubing mascaras normally don't layer or give you the drama. One coat is enough drama for me, but I have tried layer it because I've heard from other tubing mascara connoisseurs about this is that it's one of the ones that does layer well. Your lashes look great when you do two coats of it. It's still a tubing mascara. This is dense. This is luxury. I don't think that this is made of plastic. Like it's, it feels like um kind of like an aluminum of some sort maybe, but maybe it is just like fancy plastic, which also could be true. I don't want to say anything definitive, but the the wand is like nice and weighted. When you, if you've ever tried to, if you've ever had a West Metelier product, it has like weight like that to it. Not as heavy, but it's weighted. And for those of you who are new here, I'm like a packaging snob. Mascara, I tend to not get too picky with, but this feels more expensive than both the Isamea and the YSL Lash Clash, which both feel like kind of light. Not flimsy, but like light. They don't feel like a luxury product. And this is from Tarte. And this is less expensive than both the Isamea and the Lash Clash. I'm not telling you to run out and buy a new mascara. 
I am saying if you want to try this one in a mini, I like it and I think you may, okay, if you like the way my lashes look. It probably does more like lengthening than volumizing, but it's still, I don't know. I don't know. It's doing something for me. It's really giving. If you are an old friend of mine, you've been on this, you have been a subscriber for some time, you know I normally don't really give a flying fart about mascara. You know, like even the lash clash, I don't feel like I walked away from that going, this is the best mascara. Of. It's the one that I like the most, but I wasn't trying to tell you that I was good. Do you know what I mean? Like, so something's happening to me. This and this will be our ride or die until the end of the year. Okay. The Tarte mascara with tax was $25.68, which kind of leads me to believe that it was probably $24. Okay. So the thing was, if I had not bought this and I would have bought the lash clash, we would have been in the clear. But I was at Sephora. I wanted a mascara to be of to start October with that wasn't the Isamea. This put me over budget. Okay. So let me, I'm going to pop it up on the screen so this makes more sense. I am over budget by $14.52. I use $118.32 in gift cards. So that is how we ended up with negative $14.52. So it was not ideal, but I did essentially like borrow from the month before, which leads me with $85.48. So I think what is likely to happen this month is that I will keep it cool until perhaps the end of the month when it's my birthday. And perhaps my birthday will bring me some gift cards or something, um, or cash. Cash is good too, but cash doesn't, it will, it's different when it wouldn't work the same as a gift card. Do you know what I'm saying? I think if, in any other month, I would have felt really bad about that. But I think having proved for the first eight, uh, eight months of the year that I didn't go over budget after I decided that we weren't going to count shipping because I did count shipping for a while. Well, sometimes I would, and then I made a very clear call. I was like, we just won't count shipping. And the fact that my intention was to repurchase a mascara that I already know I like that wouldn't count toward my budget. So I like, I could feel bad about it, but like, I think you understand that I wasn't like running out to buy this because I was coveting it so much, but it was the reason I went over budget. I was fine before the mascara. I have two more things that I would like to discuss with you that are products. One was something that I bought a few months ago in my budget, but I think I haven't circled back to at all. This is the, I should show it to you before I open it. This is the Givenchy. First of all, Givenchy, they made that number pretty big and I, re I respect that about them. This is from the, the Sheer Velvet La Rouge in 51, which I believe it is called Brick, but it's the number 51. Do not know if this is still available. Uh, it was their fall launch, but it launched, I don't know, I bought it in July or August. I can't remember which month I bought it in. But this is it. It's this beautiful, so on camera, it reads as more red than I think it is, but it is so much more orange than it is red. It does have a scent to it, which a lot of Givenchy stuff does, but it smells, I don't think it's, sm it's not like as, it's not as pungent as the, the Gucci blushes fragrance. But it is there and I don't remember, I don't think I, I don't ever smell it for too long. Like it's not a thing that I'm like actively aware of. You know what's so funny is I, this is a complete side note. For those of you here last year, around this time, I made a video where I was like, I'm just not into lipsticks. And I like decluttered lipsticks. I talked about each of the lipsticks that I had, like went through them all. And this year I bought <laughs> so much lipstick. <laughs> so out of character for me. Maybe I'm into lipsticks now. Maybe I'm into a lip. I'm like blessed with like the kind of lips that we can do some pretty lipsticks on. And I know that not everyone with smaller, people who are not as blessed in the lip category as I am, like a bold lip. But like, I've been like really into like a statement lip. Either brown, mostly browns, so many browns, or black. And I have a red on. I haven't worn a red lipstick on one of my videos in a while, so. This is a really, really comfortable matte lipstick and it wears off pretty well. Like it's obviously not something that's gonna last all day. It's like a bullet lipstick. So when it does wear off, at least with my, my complexion and my lip color, it does, it wears off very beautifully. It's not something that I have to like, feel like I have to fuss over, even if I like wore it out to dinner, even if it like started to, you know, disappear on my lips, it disappears pretty beautifully. It's like, it's a very nice lipstick. I'm not like running out to buy more Givenchy lipsticks, but if you were interested in any of the shades in like the, the, the sheer velvet matte lipsticks from Givenchy, I say pro proceed 
at the rate at which you were proceeding. Like, I, I don't think that you need to proceed with caution. I think the lipstick formula is beautiful. In fact, somebody in, whenever this came up in a critical sass, which it did, <laughs> and I put it in there, I was like, I like it so much. Also, the French word is brick flamboyant. I love it. I'm glad I bought it. I wear it a lot. I wear it a lot. If you've seen me wear an orange lipstick, it's normally this one, but a couple times I've worn the Bobbi Brown Atomic Orange. But like, I love this. It was perfect for fall. With a brown lip liner, it's like everything to me. It's really, really great. Very comfortable. Love it. Doesn't make my lips look like butthole lips. I just love it. It's a really great formula. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't count tools to be part of my budget. I'm gonna explain how we got here and then I'll show you what I bought. I had, I already got rid of it. I already passed it on to Tiffany. Actually, if you go watch the video that Tiffany was here for, I gave it to them in that video. I'm like, this is yours now. <laughs> okay, I had a double-ended. Why did I do that with my hands? I'm gonna do a, a replay for you. Well, it's been very fun. I'm retiring from YouTube. Brush that I like to use for bronzer. I like the bigger side to use for bronzer. I believe it was supposed to be a powder brush from Hourglass. It's, it was like the double-ended one and, and there was like one for powdering under the eyes and there was a bigger one to powder the rest of your face. I, like many people, I'm not saying I'm special here, I like to use cups to hold my makeup brushes. I have some eyeshadow double-ended brushes that are more stiff and I don't mind keeping them in the cup, but those bristles the, the, on that bigger brush, it's they're just not, one's not gonna survive if I'm always putting one in the bottom. It would likely have been the side that was for powder underneath. And I actually use it for bronzer and blush. I don't know, that's what I used it for. You know, there are no rules to makeup tools. And I was just like, I would really like a bronzer brush that I don't have to like lay sideways on my vanity. I wanted to go in the cup with the rest of the things. So I went to Ruffer and I was like, everyone talks about Ruffer. In my head, Ruffer is a budget option. Ooh, someone, someone, I'm actually gonna look it up. I'm gonna take the time. Fuda, Fuda. This is Little Cat, thank you. So uh, I don't know if you're a subscriber, but if you are still around, Little Cat, Fuda. I had been told that Ruffer was a good way to get Fuda at a lesser price, right? Because I was like, I don't know that I want to buy like an expensive bronzer brush. It's $110, or it was at the time. You know, you never know with inflation at this point. Uh, it's $110. Now, there was a sale going, and I know that Refer runs sales throughout the year. So don't come at me sideways. I just happened to not go during a sale time. $110, which is the price of a food the brush. I was like, oh, well then, I don't need to buy a Refer one. I'll buy another one, I guess. And I was like, well, I've heard good things about the Tom Ford one. I know it's synthetic, but I was just like, maybe I'll just buy the Tom Ford one. I'm, if I'm already paying $110 for this brush from Refer, why not buy the original, even though it's synthetic hair brush? It's $120 or something like that. I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I'll just buy that. Literally, I checked my email, Beautylish is like, hey, hey, Sonia G's gonna drop a bronzer brush. And I was like, have you been, Sonia, are you, st are you stalking me? Like, did you know? And then I was like, well, I already know I like the quality of Sonia G brushes. And I was like, well, I'll just wait for that. And then I'll buy that. Guess what? The Sonia G bronzer brush, $85. <laughs> in this scenario, Sonia G was the budget in the Fuda category. If Tom Ford is even considered, brushes are considered Fuda. But this bronzer brush has changed the way that I feel about powder bronzer. It has. And I don't say that to you lightly. You know, ever since I got the Chanel Healthy Beige, LeBron, <laughs> that's not the right order. The Chanel Healthy Glow, no, Le Beige. <laughs> the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzer. You know that it has been the bronzer that I have, the one that I want to use all the time. How have I been recording a budget video for 45 minutes? I've been allowed to say, I have opinions. I'd be like, if I need to use a bronzer, I'm gonna use that bronzer. I have the Tom Ford bronzer at the start of the year I had, the bronzer from Hourglass, which I really liked. I like all of them, and th th none of those are bad. But I was just like, well, I really, I just really love the Chanel bronzer. So my concern actually with both the Refer and the Tom Ford and this one when I bought it was that I thought they were gonna be very stiff. They look, they look so dense, this looks dense, but it actually has a lot of give. It's, you pounce it on your skin. The way that this brush has been designed is gorgeous. It. I have the Tom, I used it today. When I would use this bronzer before with the hourglass brush, I would do like a tap and then I would like tap off. I can swirl this in here, start putting it on my face and it's the perfect, it picks up the perfect amount of product. It's like disgusting. And 
it's changed. Like, I like this. Like, I love this. Like, I've recommended this before. And I I don't take that back. If you have a fair... Uh, those caveats, obviously. Like, Tom Ford sucks with shade. We all know. Like, okay. But if this would work for you, I've, like, recommended it for you. It's changed the way I feel about this. I love this bronzer even more. I, it gives you just, like, the the perfect amount of bronzer. And I don't know how else to say that to you. And I... I I'm, I'm, like, I'm really impressed. So much like... Much like how the classic base changed how the way I felt about all of my cream bronzers, the Jumbo Bronzing Brush, which I would only use for powders, by the way. It doesn't, it's, it's I don't think it's designed to be used. It's changed the way I, I can't believe. I can't believe. It's incredible. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't say that lately. Like, I didn't think, I didn't think I, like, I've, I guess that's not true. Because I also, <laughs> I've talked about some other Sony G brushes and the, Jumbo base is also a fave that feels life-changing to me. If you needed a new bronzer brush and you were looking at to do it in the Fuda and it was in stock on Beautylish from Sonia G, worth exploring. Especially if you find bronzer to be a formidable foe in your makeup application. If you feel like that your makeup might fall apart or you apply too much bronzer, if you if if you're not someone who feels like you can be the glowy bronzy goddess. I don't I haven't tried that many brushes. So if you have a bronzer brush that's shaped similarly at a lower price point, I would love for you to share that in the comments. I think we're wrapping things up. So if you have any alternative recommendations for things I have or alternative opinions to any things that I mentioned in this video, I would love to hear your experiences either with the items that I talked about specifically or what you bought this month. What did you buy this month? I would love to hear what you bought. I'm Nebby. That is Yanzer for nosy. I don't know why we say Neb Nose and, we, and uh, Nebby is a thing that we say here. So I'm Nebby. I want to know what you bought this month. If you're on a no buy, how's your no buy going? Did you dupe any palettes? Tell me how you stayed on track in whatever your financial situation uh, for this year for buying makeup or not buying makeup is going. I would love to hear more about yours. Um, we're a little community here. We help each other out. If you are not subscribed, but you enjoyed today's video, it's quite, quite a manic video, by the way. I will acknowledge that. I would love to have you subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, hang out. I mean, we do this a lot. Uh, not Well, we do budget videos once a month, but I'm here mostly three times a week. Critical Sass Live will not be happening on the last Wednesday of this month. It will be on the last Thursday of this month because I have dinner reservations and that's the day after my birthday. But I do just feel as though that might be a birthday celebration dinner. It hasn't been explicitly said as much, but I will dress as if it is my birthday. Besides the point, I will schedule that today. And I will leave that link down below if you want to send a reminder for Critical Sass Live. It's going to be at 7.30 p.m. as always, just uh, Thursday instead of Wednesday. If you like, did you like the video? I mean, like, did you like the video with the button? Uh, again, I'm on Patreon.com if you'd like to support me there. Every support level gets the same benefits. It's just two extra videos a month. If you can, that'd be great. And if you want to, that'd be great. But if you don't want to or cannot, that's excellent. I'm just happy that you are here on the channel. That's the most support I could ever ask for. And that's it. I think I'm going to shut up now. I feel like I've been, <laughs> I've been at this for a while. So I appreciate you all so much for watching. And remember to follow your hoat and you'll find me. I appreciate you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Friends.